this canvas is exactly 18 by 24 inches. Same size as your paper that you're going to be using for this drawing. And you'll notice this image you submitted to this one's a little bit short, right? It's possible. It's like, oh, well, there's nothing above here that is critical. So I you could move this down like so within your paper, and that would work just fine, right? So okay, you would just continue this background. So, so you can just imagine what's back there and just in this is the correct proportions. Or you could use your other crop, this one. I like this crop better. It just is more interesting. Okay. Yeah. Why? There's these really interesting curves going on. Here, everything's radiating from the central point. And then there's different armatures and paintings and design. And armatures re relate the word armature to think of the word arm. Armature relates to a structure in composition. Everything you draw, everything you create visually has some kind of structure to it. So think of this as a radial composition or a radial armature because there's a single point and everything's radiating out from it as if you know, like this was a hub and these are spokes of a wheel just constantly radiating out from a single point. These both have that in common, but this has some interesting things going on, which I want to point out. Your eye wants to continue even after it, even after it's like, it wants to continue following things. Your eye wants to follow along edges. That's just it's the nature of your eye and your mind, actually. It goes right here, we're following along and it stops right there. That's not how your mind works. Your mind is going to see this and this. It's going to recognize that there's a connection there. But because they're aligned and they have that alignment, we can't help but notice things like that, even if we're not aware of it. On some level, we pick it up. So there's something very fluid and rhythmic about that that's quite attractive. The other one doesn't have that. It's, it's not as, as fluid. Maybe we could say, oh, well, maybe this line here and this one, but it's not as beautiful as the other one. And also the angle of this is, is quite pleasing. I also want to point out you can choose not to have things in this piece. For instance, it's like, okay, we don't need this. Certain details you don't want, well, don't, just don't draw them in. Here we have this background out of focus. You can choose to put it in or not. It's up to you. But if you didn't, these are decisions, aesthetic decisions that you make. Okay. Furthermore, let's look at these as values. So I do recommend you convert your image to black and white. And for those of you who are familiar with Photoshop, I recommend this black and white filter and let me get it down. For those of you who don't have Photoshop and um, let me pull this up. So you have lots of different tools to your uh, available to you just depends but one if, if you're on Macintosh just go to open it up in preview go to tools and adjust color and then this is where you're just going to desaturate it and then you can make some adjustments on the curves or the levels excuse me here so that's a possibility. Let me go back here. I have more control in Photoshop. Okay, don't go crazy with these. So like if you go too extreme, you, you'll get all kinds of weird distortion going on like that. This has a soft light source. There's no direct clear light source on it. That's fine. There's a lot of clarity to it. 
And one of the things I would consider if I were drawing this in charcoal are these interesting shadows that are being cast by one blade above the other. I, I think that's a, a very nice aspect of this piece. And in these deep crevices, you could see it really gets dark in some of these areas. And that's the clear, the, what really makes this piece is the nature of this plant is there's this constant overlap of one, right, for lack of a better word, petal or blade on top of another. They just keep overlapping. You, you want to capture that effect. Okay, now let me do this. I want to talk about the grid. So you can see, but I can't see it because my Zoom user interface is in the way. I just moved it out of the way. You don't see it, but it's in my way. All right, so here we are in inches. It's 18 inches wide. What's the simplest way to create a grid for this? I recommend you work and measure off from the left hand side. So simplest way is to divide your paper in half, get a ruler, mark it off. And I already have a ruler on that and I'm just gonna pull some guides. So it's 18, so I know it's gonna, it's gonna be nine inches. And then of course, I'll divide that in half. It looks like I'm off a little bit on that. I nudged it incorrectly. Where's my mouse? Easier to control. Okay. So I have four columns, and now I want to make squares, very important. So let's go down. My squares are going to be four and a half inches. So there, those are my squares, not rectangles, very important. Now on your phone, On your phone, you're going to be using the, the grid app. And I, first, uh, you establish the grid on your phone. And I would recommend you just make four across, starting at the top, and then go down. I have to use my mouse to keep slipping on me. Come on back. And on my last, this will be really helpful for me as I move forward and scale this piece up on paper. These are just guides. I can print this out, which is really helpful if you have that, uh, you have a printer. And if not, save your image and have that handy. Ultimately, I would be drawing, pulling some lines on this because I, if, I would, if I do want to print it out, I need to pull lines. Or I could take a screenshot of this, however you want to work. Okay, so um, 18 inches by 24, the size of your drawing paper, okay? And this is my image that I'm drawing from. Now, I'm gonna start from the bottom. So I wanna show you why. It's like I have a square here and this part's not so important. So that's why I'm going, I'm starting from this area. So you could choose where, whichever square you want. I think I'm going to start off with this critical middle square right here. And what I would do, I would work in pencil. Let me get these side by side here. 
and it's like, oh, interesting. This almost exactly coincides with that corner. So that's really helpful, that mark right there. And then what's the angle of that? I'm, I'm drawing the angle, I'm visualizing an angle. And I can go, well, how far close does it get to this bottom? Pretty close, somewhere around there. Where is it relative to this grid line and this grid line? Pretty much right in the middle. So it's gonna do something like this. And then we have that other piece kind of wrapping around like so. And then this one just so happens to be moving across that corner as well, a little above it. And it, I'm looking at this negative space right here, this kind of V shape. So I'm going to try to emulate that space. I'm drawing this space, not just the line, but I'm looking at that space. It's like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I'm looking at this negative space as well between those two. It's like, and I'm judging how far line does that go? Is it halfway? No, no, it's not halfway from here to here. It's a little lower, something like that. What's the angle of it? I'm going to measure the angle. It's like, okay, it's off to the side a little bit like this. It's not straight up and down, it's off to the side ever so slightly. So I want to emulate that angle. And I'm going to pull a plumb line. So a straight line down from this point where that intersects, where does that fall relative to this point? So that plumb line, that's really helpful. Where's my little triangle when I need it? There it is. So I can draw a, a line straight down. I can I can see where to where the lines, so that's really helpful. It aligned pretty much there. What about this position here? You know, how far down do I go? And at this point, I'm gonna not want to limit myself just a square, I'm going to go, well, what about, how does this continue? And you don't have to like isolate one square at a time. Feel free to go beyond those squares, but for demonstration purposes, I'm wanting to focus on just this one. Okay. So I was going to draw this shape here. It's like, okay, where's the top of that relative to this square where here's halfway on that square. There's halfway on this square. And it's below it more. So that's about right. And that's about the right angle. So we're looking at something like that. There's halfway between here and here, halfway mark between that square is right there. And it's a little to the right of it, this, this other something like this angle. And then there's a little sliver on the other side of it and it continues ever so slightly kind of like so into the next the square next to it. Um, but it doesn't go all the way down to that point. That's a mistake on my part. There's another leaf. This one goes across like there, it just kind of goes all the way over to here. And then something like, something like that. What about this leaf here and this leaf here? Is that crossing over? It barely goes across this leaf that it's, in front of it just barely does but it does excuse my head popping in there i think i want to get established this first that's really helpful it's not dead center it's off to the right a little bit dead center of the squares there it's off to the right a little bit something like this so you could see i'm way off in its position it's more over here by establishing that first that helped me correct this position 
the angle of it. I'm trying to emulate the angles. Pops up a little bit more, comes down. Kind of connects a little bit in this way here. Right. And then this goes over and like so. This is going to continue that angle. I'm kind of triangulating these points in my mind's eye. What's that angle? Something like this. What's its position? And I'm going to just initially draw kind of light and just pull it all the way down to here and just see if I can get some fluid motion as well. Okay. This technique is not gesture drawing. It's pretty much the opposite. It's about analysis and measurements and things like that. Now, if you want to, you could start off with some gestures before you start putting all these and then putting all these little measurements in. It's up to you. This will be more precise. Um, Notice I'm holding my pencil like so. I really encourage you to get in the habit of doing that when you're drawing. You'll get more fluid marks. When you're working large, you're not just using your fingers. You're looking and then suddenly start using your wrist and you get bigger. And then when you get even work even larger, you are then using your elbow. And then when you're working really big, you're using your shoulder to move across and hitting the camera. So it boggles around and working really big. You get to use your whole body and that gets to be pretty fun. Okay. So what about this point here? It's almost level with that little point right here. Where is it? I'm missing something. Um, what am I missing? I didn't put this side in yet. So that's really important. There's halfway here. It's a little above halfway. So that's correct. And it kind of continues like so. And then this bounces out like so thickness. We see the thickness of this leaf or stalk, I'm not sure what you want to call that. How far down does it go on this square? Roughly here. And it goes across. Something like so. And then this is doing this. So don't get locked into exactly what you initially draw. You do want things to be, be fluid and, and that's kind of just gonna add a lot more um, rhythm to your piece. That's one of the downsides of being so careful about measuring is that in the process, the rhythm uh, becomes often becomes sacrificed. The fluidity becomes sacrificed. So I'm going to speed up this process and just show you a couple more. So where is this point right here? Well, you can't see it on my screen. So let's do this. Where is this point relative here? It's like, well, it's above halfway point. Here's halfway, it's above. So something like this. And then this mark here, that's halfway right there. That's really helpful. So there's my halfway mark. Not quite that angle, more like this. And it would be helpful if I go beyond, right? It's, it's like I want you to be able to see everything. So let's do this. Um, it doesn't go to that point. Let's see where I went. That's incorrect. This is why these grids are so helpful. We have this other little fuzzy one in the background here out of focus. Try to get that angle, that's good. 
that's somewhere about there roughly. And then this important leaf here. So using this technique, we can quickly establish accurate proportions. Just make it larger. <laughs> 